hard bodies of the six little girls who contracted the disease much ex more expediently. Chris had been a pale, pink-eyed lass. If her parents had expected great things of her, marriage, children, perhaps a crumb decorating business, they hadn't let on. She'd made it eight years, three months, and some change, but she'd nibbled at love and rejection. She'd been the longest of Tom Tischler's romances an entire week, until pale Priscilla became paler Priscilla, and then, of course, dead Priscilla. <laughs> and her mother had commented brightly, there'll be more to eat now she's gone. <laughs> Famine was not the prettiest of times. <laughs> Conflict. Down the dirt lane at the foot of Tom Tischler's straw bed, two spectacularly long white ears pierced the down horizon, like a sunrise of hare's ears, like two gleaming swords come to fight the more like asparagus, really. All she saw. When her husband came home from the lab, she said, look, 48 dogs, count them, go on, count them. He said, I see a tree, I see the grass, I don't, dogs she said, 48, not 50, there and there and there. And she pointed with one hand and then the other to all 48, to the terriers and the collie, the German shepherd and the poodles. Her husband gently took her arms and turned her so that the garden, clear and quiet, was behind her. Tea, he said, seating her on the sofa. She filled on the sofa arm, dug her fingers down into the cushion gaps and found a furled up twist of paper. She untwisted it and read, Take heart, dearest, your luck will change. She smiled at that and did take heart. The dogs she knew would all find homes, all 48, some in pairs, some singly, the terriers and the collie, the German shepherd and the poodles. When he came back with the My favourite ex-aunt, she dies to hear mortician siren, so the packet says, and we meet up once in a full moon, when her side show and my job, Touring drag show, or touring magic show, or dead body in a police reenactment for country TV, find us in the same town. She sells tickets to three different rides, and as she says, they're as cheap as shit, but even I look good at night when the light's behind me. Her, <laughs> Her boss quivers on the floor of the ticketing booth, hands tied behind his back with my pink and purple keep fit skipping rope. I point a licorice gun at his shivering forehead. Sweat drips from under his bry nylon toupee and courses across his cheeks. I'm surprised the gun hasn't melted down his nose. You'd better hand over all the money you owe her, I say, gravel voiced, my dead body makeup from that day's reenactment cracking in the moonlight, streaming through the window. I wave the gun at him, hoping the smell of fear masks the smell. The baby kick for the first time. It was a surprise mostly because she had not acknowledged it up till now, and yet there it was, powerful, declarative, I am here. The kick marked a metamorphosis, a low rumble becoming a strong hold on her soul. In that instant, she recalled the circuitous route to here, his glances in the lab room, as Dr. Spencer explained hematoxylin and eosin strains in pathology reporting, then beers at the diner, the tussle in the back seat, the torn ruffle of her underwear, ripping because of something unleashed in her, not him. And him, breathing, Evie, 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 Evie. And her liking this nickname, though she had not invited him to call her anything at all. <laughs>